Alright, we are up to slide number 38. This is lecture number 3. Okay, some questions. Let's pause and see any kind of questions that you have. I got about uh, 12 more slides, maybe 20 more minutes until we finish. Let's see then. And now, any questions? Any questions you may have so far? Again, some, a lot of this is just basic introduction to what is what and what things mean. Questions? No? Okay. Firms wishes, all right. Sales is this, don't do revenue. So, what is a prescriptive pricing model? Example, a firm wants to determine the best pricing for one of its products in order to maximize revenue. They believe or determine the following model. Sales is affected by minus 2.9 times the price plus 3240.9. And the revenue is price times sales. So you write out, you substitute the sales here, and you get 22.9 times the price squared plus 32.40 times the price. Okay? Then you can draw a chart and determine what maximizes the total revenue. This is very simple, very easy. You're going to see all of this, especially in chapter 2 and 3 in Excel. In chapter 2 is going to be some calculation. In chapter 3, you can also or will also draw a picture. Plenty of examples coming down the road. Let's see what happens now. Models can be deterministic and stochastic. In a deterministic model, you know exactly what happens. You know if you have a certain input, you get certain output. Okay. In a stochastic model, some information is uncertain. Maybe some of the inputs is uncertain. Or maybe you have certain inputs and the output is a little bit un or totally uncertain. Okay. And okay, they have here some customer demand as an important element of some model. For example, a brand new movie, but there is a big bad rain. So it doesn't matter how good or bad the movie is, if there is a horrible rain, the rain's going to affect the movie, people going to the movie. Okay, that's a simple example. And they have some of this stuff over here. And the last piece, the last section, is that the main purpose, the main use of analytics is to solve problems, usually to solve business problems. Problems. Well, how do we solve a problem? Well, these are the steps. Number one, you recognize the problem. Number two, you define the problem. Number three, you structure the problem. Four, analyze it, interpret results, and the last is implement the solution. Okay, so it's so interesting to see somebody walk on the bus. So let's take a look at step number one. To recognize a problem, of course, is the most important part. If there is a problem, you first you gotta recognize, accept, admit that there is a problem. In general, this is a general idea, general differences between cultures. Western cultures are quick and easy at finding and identifying problems. In Asian cultures, Asian cultures prefer not to identify problems. They prefer to hide the problems. In Asian cultures, there's the concept of losing Face. And a problem usually is associated with a loss of face. And therefore, if it's going to be a loss of face, it's better not recognize the problem. It's like, oh, the problem doesn't exist. Okay? That's very 
common. You just ignore the problem until it gets bigger and bigger. Okay? So, the first step in any problem solving is you actually admit there is a problem, actually identify it. Well, question now, what is a problem? Well, problem is when you have a certain desired state, certain desired goal, in reality is very different from the desired state. Okay? For example, you know, somebody may have a big belly, desired state is slim, but you're actually not slim. Okay? So, you got a belly problem. Okay? Or, your back might be like this, which is not exactly the way you want it. You want it straight up. Okay? And problems could be many different ways. Could be a language problem. People don't, you know, speak language good enough. Or we can have a talking problem. You know, two people talk to each other and have fun, right? Uh, during the lecture. So uh, there are all sorts of different problems. Okay. Costs may be too high. The product doesn't sell well. Or People spread the rumor that the product is bad, or not good, or poor quality, or whatever the problem might be. Once you recognize the problem, the second step is actually to define the problem. And, <laughs> fun, right? No fun. Defining the problem is actually a tricky step. For example, very difficult to define what is a slim person. Very difficult to define. You know, what does it mean, slim? You know, how big's got to be the belly? How big's got to be the belt? Okay? Some people will be borderline. You know, where is the border? Where so are you slim or not slim? Okay? Uh, even more difficult of uh, defining the problem, and I've done a lot of it uh, reading, is about cholesterol in blood. You've all heard about cholesterol being supposedly bad, at least bad cholesterol. Well, at what level you got a cholesterol problem? Well, on a simpler terms will be blood pressure. They measure your blood pressure from time to time. And let's say yours is 130 to 90. Do you have a blood pressure problem? You know, in other words, is 120 over 80 okay or not okay? Is 130 a problem or not a problem? In other words, sometimes it's very clear what is good and appropriate, meaning no problem. And it's very clear what is a problem, big problem. But there's an in-between area where it's very difficult to define what the problem is. Also very difficult to define a problem which has many dimensions. For example, poor English. But it's poor English reading skills. Okay? Or someone can read very good and very well, but cannot speak. Okay. So you may have reading, good reading skills and poor speaking skills. Someone may have good listening skills, others may not have good listening. Skills. So, you got reading skills, writing skills, listening skills, speaking skills. You got about four different types of skills, okay? And on some you may be good and on others you may be bad. Question is, what is a problem? When is the problem big? When is the problem small? What is more important? What is less important? Same thing is heart disease. Well, how do we measure heart disease? What does it mean, heart disease? Okay. All right. Here's an example. You know, a student keeps laughing and laughing and laughing. After a minute, we got a problem, right? You know, once they start, you know, laughing, for, you know, it's okay to laugh from time to time for 10 or 20 seconds, right? But laughing for 10 minutes is a problem, right? Maybe we're going to send you out there, right? <laughs> Right? You can't just keep laughing and laughing and laughing. You know it's going to be a problem, right? So the question is, if the student is laughing only for a minute or two, is it a problem? Again, it's very 
tricky. It's the gray area where it might be or it might not be. But laughing for 10 minutes is obviously a problem, right? It's obvious. All right, so competing objective. Is just reading good English good enough? Or reading and writing? Or just reading and listening? You may have different objectives, okay? The objective here is, is the objective learning or the objective fun? If it's fun, then, you know, laughing's not a problem, right? Okay, so it also means whether other groups are affected. Another way to define a problem is problem may be associated with one person. It may be associated with a group. Okay. So, do we have or you have a language problem if 90% of people use English well and only 10% have poor language skills? Is this a problem? Very small. But if 60% of people have a language problem, then it's a big problem, okay? So, again, when you have to define it for all people, then it's a different story. For example, over here, Cambodians are relatively slim. And Americans are very fat, okay? What about a country that's somewhere in between? It's not as slim as here but not as bad as over there. An example of such country will be in neighboring Thailand. Okay. Well, Thailand we have what is called a childhood obesity problem. In other words, people 40, 50, 60 aren't that fat. They're fine. But the young kids, they go fast food, junk food, and 20, 30% of them are growing from children to be so, we got a child overweight or obesity problem, but not. In other words, how do you define the problem? Do you define it for a whole nation? Do you define it for a certain group of people? Well, here's another interesting statistic. Only out of students, only let's say 5% of boys are overweight and 35% of girls are overweight. Up, not here, out there, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, now the question is, does it mean that students have a problem or it's only girls being more fat, okay? You see, how do you define the problem? You see, it's not easy, it's not so trivial, okay? Sometimes just getting to what the problem is, is a big problem, okay? Next would be, Structuring the problem. You need to see what the goals are. Improve English language skill. But do we improve the speaking part? Do we improve the listening part? Do we improve the writing part? In other words, what is the actual goal? What is the objective? Okay. And then, how do we go about it? Do we give you more assignments? Do you go for an extra class? Speaking class? listening class, laughing class, right? So, what are the possible decisions? In other words, we first, whenever we have a problem, you need to see what the problem is, say how to solve the problem, and then you evaluate each alternative and see which one is best. In other words, and the next part, of course, is you identify constraints. Well, if you're taking already six courses, you're way too busy to enroll in a seventh course of English language. But if you're only in three courses, maybe you, you can add an extra fourth course. So, structuring the problem means what's the goal, what are the possible alternatives, and what are the constraints. And then you analyze the problem. Ooh, why are girls so much fatter than the boys? Ooh, what's going on? Do they eat different? Do they not exercise? Ooh, whatever. You got to analyze it, okay? Or why are children so much fatter but the older generation not? Well, the children likes to go to fast food. 
junk food. Whatever the problem is, you need to begin to analyze and see what are the causes, what might be causing it, okay? You may have to do some experimentation, okay, on certain groups, okay? You have to figure out what the risks are. Well, if they're obese, would, let's say in school, everyone do some running help with some swimming help, okay? Well, if they are obese, we need to figure out, is the problem with the diet? In other words, the junk food that they eat? Or is the problem with Facebook? Sitting all day long and playing the phone and, you know, not exercising at all. You know, so you need to identify. Is it somehow girls eat differently than boys? Is it somehow that young people de eat differently than older people? Okay, so you got to figure out what exactly is causing or driving the problem if you want to find some solution, right? So you look at alternatives, you look at solution, and the solutions got to have some goals. You got to need some goals. So you analyze the problem. And then you interpret the results. The results may be, well, this is what the real cause is, and therefore, this is what the real solution is, okay, for whatever the problem is. And then, when you interpret results, you need to understand that sometimes models are simplifications. They are made to be easy to work with. They are not the real thing. They're not going to give you exact answers. They're going to give you only approximate answers, okay? So these are simple limitations, okay? And you need to understand if there is a model, what's the underlying assumption, okay? So up until recently, modern medicine believed that obesity, people getting fat because they eat more. So the model was, the more you eat, the more fat you are. Well, we now have, with simple experiments, it's easy to show that there are certain foods people can eat more meat, and just eating more meat doesn't make you more fat. Okay. Turns out that even better, eating more fat doesn't make you fat. This is strange, right? But it turns out, when you look into eating more rice and wheat, we call these grains, make you more fat. So it turns out that the simplest model of more calories, more fat was totally wrong, but more carbohydrates, more fat is a more correct representation of human physiology. But there are other issues like thyroid, like exercise, like stress, okay? People under stress gain more weight. So you need to understand what the model is. Let's see what else we got. And finally, once you figure out what the problems are, what the model is, what the solution is, you actually do it. If it's changing the diet, you change the diet. If it's changing the exercise, you change the exercise. If it's the stress level, then it's this. Whatever the problem is, you need to eventually do it and do the problem. And this basically completes the chapter. Let's see. Any questions? And complete the lecture for today. We do some lab work. Huh?